Dr. Hector Garcia, how do I introduce you? What's your title? What do you do? Um, I am a clinical psychologist. I work primarily with vets with uh, PTSD, mostly vets who've, who've been to combat. And I write books and do research, things of that nature. Talk a lot about the brain, why we think what we think, why we feel what we feel. And I just want to jump right into the deep end. Tribalism, fear of the other, it's everywhere. Can you talk to me about uh, this tendency towards wanting tribes and tribalism in the human condition? I can, and I think, I think it, it explains a lot of the, the problems in human thriving that we see today. Um, my interest, as you know, is, is, is really strongly grounded in the evolutionary sciences. And one of the things that, that uh, I often come back to is this understanding that we evolved in small, knit, close groups of, of, tri of people living in, in tribal societies, topping off at about 150 people, who solved problems of daily living of survival together. And in many ways, uh, we're kind of constrained by those parameters, by the group size and the dynamics of those tribes. So this is somewhere where our instincts begin to, um, you know, uh, maybe be a mismatch with how we live in the modern day in these giant societies of people we don't know. We're very good at cooperating with people we don't know, but you can see where, where our tribalistic psychology strains against how we live today. One good example is, is uh, you know, COVID-19 uh, suspicion about, about COVID-19 as, a, as, a, as, you know, a hoax or vaccines being safe or things of that nature. How could that possibly be in the modern day when we, when we know so much about medicine, we know so much about the course of disease? A, a great explanation of that is become a badge of tribal commitment. To, to, to um, you know, reject vaccination efforts, to, to suspect COVID-19 itself is a hoax. We've heard this in, 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 you know, American popular culture, unfortunately. Tribal fears used to be um, necessary, right? I mean, the survival mechanism, is that right? It's, I know it's a cliche, but I'm on the African savanna, right? And uh, the fear of the other may have kept me alive. Is that a... Good way to put it, no? Fear of the other and, and, you know, unfortunately, fear of your own tribe, fear of being rejected from your own tribe. You know, we, we are relatively weak, frail, slow creatures compared to the other animals on the African savanna that we evolved alongside, right? But what we really had, our biggest adaptation, was one another, you know? Um, today, all other animals live at our mercy. So without the tribe, we were defenseless. I mean, just think of the implications of being abandoned on the African savanna. We wouldn't survive a day, you know. Um, so there's, there's a fear of being rejected from the tribe that goes way deep, that goes deep into the, uh, you know, the survival, um, the survival portions of our brain, the amygdala and other structures that, that are, it's very ancient. But not only fear of being abandoned by the tribe, but fear of the tribe itself. So um, a biological anthropologist out of Harvard uh, named Richard Rangham wrote an, an amazing book called uh, The Goodness Paradox, where he makes a good case for the idea that um, one of the things that helped humans be domesticated, in a sense, be more... Um, more peaceable with one another is that we policed our own tribes and murdered people who got out of hand, who were too aggressive. Um, and that went along for such a long time um, that uh, that also contributed to a fear that we have of our own group. And it wasn't just those who, who were overly aggressive for other infractions, for just not, not towing the line of the, of the tribe, for not um, any, any kind of social deviance could put you at risk. Um, the witch hunts of our history, you could say. How do we approach beliefs that are linked to identity? Is it true that the amygdala, the fight or flight, the same response to a physical threat kicks in when there's an ideological threat? Like if you come after me, does the same part of my brain activate? There's some amazing research looking at people 
um, going against the stances of their own political party. But it's, some of this has been done in an MRI machine. And yeah, the, the fear, pain, threat centers of the brain really light up, which really speaks to the, the idea that, hey, going against the tribe for a, a significant part of our history was, was a very dangerous proposition. And you know, when you try to approach people on the plane of ideas, and you're, in doing so, you're, you, you, you know, maybe force a look at their tribe or force somebody to question their tribe or challenge their tribe, you're going to get pushback. And people are going to block that because, because of the fear that that engenders. A lot of it's unconscious. You know? So I, I think we need to understand more about, about our tribalistic psychology in general. Um, and if, you know, and, and how, um, how those defenses uh, get sparked by how we approach different topics and how those defenses, um, you know, prompt us to fight one another in the streets as we've seen uh, in, in recent years. So you're talking about kind of a societal, cultural, familial, tribal consequence in place, right? Toe the line, be us, represent us, wave the standard or else there's a punitive measure in place. Absolutely, and even if even if it's not you know opprobrium, even if it's not rejection, you know, um, even if it's not violent, it's it's or or anything like that. There there's still there's still a, a, a great fear that we all have uh, of going against our group, um, and so so that explains in, in 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 many ways why people will hold ridiculous beliefs. The Earth is flat. Uh, Microsoft is putting injecting chips into our bodies so they can track us. Um, there was one recently about uh, JFK returning to Dallas yeah. or something. Yeah, going to I Dallas just... to become uh, Trump's running mate in 2024. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. The, the absolutely patently absurd unless you consider the fact that, you know, holding the, 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 the tribal line, so to speak, really meant a lot to us in, in our ancestral past, and it, and it may have meant life or death, and it may show commitment to the tribe to be something, to believe something that's outlandish. You know, that's a hard-to-fake signal, right? If you believe something that's outlandish, you're really showing, and you express it publicly, you're really showing commitment to the tribe. Well, you're the psychologist. How much of that speaks to ego? I'm sorry you're one of the sheeple. I'm sorry that you accept the party line. Do you think that serves the ego in some way? I do think it serves the ego, right? I know something that you don't know. I have, I have knowledge that you don't know. It's privileged knowledge. But, you know, our egos don't stop at the individual. We, we have cultural identities. We have tribal identities. And, and we have, you know, I think uh, there's some interesting research looking at, at how groups have their own self-esteem and there can be threats to that self-esteem by other groups. And so we try to maintain our self-esteem through group identity. And that's where it gets tricky. That's where the blinders come on. I'm interested again in how we caricaturize the other, right? I mean, someone looks at a Muslim and they only see the caricature of the Muslim or this sort of inflated idea of what a Muslim is, but they don't know any Muslims, right? Uh, the atheist, you know, they have this opinion about those godless, immoral, rudderless atheists, but they don't really know any atheist or they're not aware of it. You know, they tend to uh, other people on their own terms. I don't know, I'm guessing that's a common human tendency, right? It's easier to hate the caricature than it is if I was to see them in three dimensions of flesh and blood human being, right? Sure, sure. The, the, our, our definitions of the other tend to be overly simplistic and, you know... Um, I mean, atheists do it too. The religious are like this. Sure. Uh, you know, and of course, religions are so wildly complicated. You know, you can't put them in a box. They don't fit on a bumper sticker. But, you know, we're guilty as part of the human condition of saying they are this, right? The differences between all humans is... is, is it's not a categorical difference. There are, there are subtle differences. We have far more similarities than we do differences. But, um, you know, given that tribal psychology, 
you know, we, we tend to, to exaggerate those differences. And, and I, that speaks to a time when we were, we were way more likely to die from at the hands of the tribe over the hill than we are today. We've gotten infinitely, infinitely more civil with one another. And that's something that a lot of people don't realize. You know, um, when you look at, at contemporary hunter-gatherers, for example, up to 30% of men in particular in these societies are killed in intertribal warfare. Imagine any city you live in and 30% of the men getting killed. We've become exponentially more civil to one another, but we still retain that psychology that fears the outside tribe. And that again is where we, I think that, that calls for a deeper understanding of our evolved psychology and how it gets played out today and how it serves to limit human thriving and our ability to cooperate. Look at how we're cooperating. Um, look at our failures of cooperation against COVID-19. You know, there is a large sector of, of, of the population in the United States that, that is anti-vax. And it's become a tribal thing. The other tribe believes in this, they believe in this vaccine. We don't. How do you break through that? I mean, I'm not asking the question, you know, Dr. Garcia, how do we fix the world? I'm not putting that on your shoulders. But how do you break through? How do, you, how do we reconnect in this increasingly disconnected world? Science literacy, media literacy, I mean, uh, you know, it's very easy to get divided in that way uh, if, if the more you tap into the major networks who purposefully divide us. You have to look at these, you have to look at, the, at, at, at information with, with a critical mind or you get manipulated. You have to understand your, your own evolved psychology or others will manipulate you with it. And often, uh, it, serves, it serves the powerful moneyed interest to, to separate us, to manipulate us in many ways. But uh, you, what happens is that, that you know, cohesion breaks down and again, we'll fight each other in the streets or families will break apart because, because uh, you know, there are these outside forces pushing our tribalistic buttons, so to speak. You think awareness of it maybe is one of the first steps? That's one of the first steps. That's one of the first steps. Yeah. I have in this evolved tendency. It's there. I'm hardwired. But being aware of it might allow me to, how would I say it, uh, override my programming a it's little like, bit? It's, it would be like good psychotherapy. I think the, evol the, the evolutionary psycho um, sciences are like good psychotherapy. You know, um, It may not always show you what you want to see, but it'll show you what you need to see. And a lot of it is, is outside of our conscious awareness, just like, just like some of the uh, dynamics that may be uncovered in psychotherapy. Um, in fact, is there's a term for that called instinct blindness. Like most of our instincts fly under the radar of our conscious awareness. So bringing them to the surface for examination, we need that. We need that desperately because there are people who are uh, manipulating those those uh, evolved uh, psychologies that we carry around with us. Dr. Hector Garcia, thanks for talking to me. My pleasure. <laughs>